Welcome to our ceramic studio in Oceana. My name is Dee Dee Young and I'm going to take you on a tour today and show you what we do. This has been made from a mold. It's a little Santa shoe. And it turned out really nice. She cleaned it up, got it all cleaned up. We have numbers on the bottom so that she can find the same mold again. And it's just lovely in the way the molds give you all this texture. Some are, some are simple. This one has a nice, good texture to it. You can see the little bit of seam that we get with the mold. Sometimes this comes, we can work with this and get this to come down. She liked it the way it was, so she left it. And it's really, it's really pleasant. You can do this too, you can. This one is, I, I love this one. It's quite lovely, it's a mug. You can make your own mug. And it has coffee written on it in all different languages. And its handle's already built in, so you don't have to add the handle. You just pour in mold. This comes out of the mold. You clean it up a little bit around the edges. And you make sure that you write your name on the bottom. We have to have names or initials on the bottom so we know who made them. And then you would glaze it, and you'd have your own coffee mug that you made yourself. And that would be a lot of fun. These were made for Christmas time, but she ran out of time. This is a great little camel. It has this hump. You can see the you can see the hair and fur on it. I think camels have hair and fur. And this is cleaned up nicely. It's great face to it. This is a mold. You pour your slip, which is liquid clay, into a mold, which I can show you over in just a little bit. These are getting ready for Easter. We got the little bunny, and we have another little animal over here. These have been glazed, and these have been fired. Now, if you want to get ready for St. Patrick's Day, what's better than a clover? This is a mold also. It's been poured. You can see it's opened here in the back. You can't have a, you can't have a thick piece without a hole in it or an opening because it'll explode. So the molds actually help us to do this. Turned out really nice. Now it'll be glazed and it will go into the kiln and be fired and will come out with beautiful colors. This piece, I love the vases. You can do so much with it. We have vases that people are putting um, their succulents in, um, vases that are just decorative, that, that come out with really gorgeous glazes on them. This one has some little rings to it, so some of the glazes will actually make the rings show up better because we, they, what we call break, the color will break over them. So you'll have blue in one place, maybe a brown in, in, around the rings. And it's very simple to do. You can come in on a Monday, pour your, pour your mold, and come in on Tuesday and take it out of your mold. So it takes two days, and we're open on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays from 12.30 until 3.30 now. So we added an extra hour to give us more time to make things. So you don't have to rush. You've got, and then you come in the next day and you take it out of the mold, you clean it up. We'll help you with all that. Just come on down. Over here, we have this wonderful piece that I love. It's small, it's simple, but very intricate at the same time because all of this is coil work. First you roll, you roll out the clay to make a coil, and it's just a long, round piece. Then you put it in, and you put it in, and you keep putting them together. These are little dots that are added afterwards, and these will help hold it together. You can see the coil on the base of it. This was the start of the piece, this was the initial coil, and everything was built on top of it. 
We have this piece, which is hand built. She put the base, she made a nice base for it. Then she laid out a piece of clay, put decoration on it, put it together. Right here, you can see where the seam is. Then she over put this and overlaid it with her fingers to give it a different definition. And this will make a beautiful, beautiful little vase. Even if you want to make hearts, something, something simple, you can make these, you could tie them all together to make um, a wall piece. Just tie them, tie them, tie them, tie them, tie them. And it's wonderful. We have cookie cutters. So you can use the cookie cutters, cut your clay out, and then put the glaze on, and this one's ready to be glazed. So it's really, um, it's a fun process. There's so many things you can do. You play with mud, and we like it. We like it a lot. Um, this piece has, is ready to be bisque fired. This one has not been fired yet, so I am very, very careful with it because it's very fragile at this stage. She put wonderful heart feet on it, so it, she'll be able to glaze the entire bottom. The sides are made with hearts, which are really, really beautiful. And then on the interior, she also painted hearts. So you have a lot of heart with this one, a lot of heart. Then we're going to go over and we're going to show you the kiln. This is our kiln. This is our Aladdin project. This is what we're contacting you for. We need a new kiln. I'm the Aladdin because I'm in charge of all of the paperwork and getting the word out and making sure everybody knows that this is what we need. You're the genies. You're the ones that grant the wishes. You're the ones that give the $10. You're the ones that give the $100. We're looking to raise $6,000. One of these kilns cost $4,900 without tax, without shipping. And we're adding one thing that we need in this, in this ceramics room that we don't have is a clay extruder that will help make those coils so we don't have to make them all by hand. And it's part of our Aladdin project. We know out there that you care about the community. This is a community room. This is where we meet. This is where we talk. This is where we laugh. This is where we create. And we can't do it without a kiln. We have to have a kiln to fire all of the projects we're working on. So I know that you have it in your heart and the office is waiting to collect your money. It all goes through the office. So I encourage you to come down, make a donation. We're looking at a year, but I don't think this kiln will last a year. We've already had it repaired in October, um, two weeks before the art show, because we had so many things to get fired. It's had, over, it's had 600 firings, and the manufacturer was very, very surprised that it's still going at 600 firings. So we are on the edge. Different things that fall apart on the kiln is this little piece has a little hairline crack in it, and it can't have hairline cracks. So the heat in it gets up to 2200 degrees when we fire at cone five. In here, we're, fire, we're seeing that our bricks are falling apart. And that's what keeps all of our kiln temperature even. These are the elements. We've had these replaced in October. These elements and these little pins is what conducts the electricity. And this helps to regulate our temperature and let us know it's a thermocoupler. And this lets us know what the heat in the kiln is. It's one little piece.
that connects to our big box. And our big box is all of, it tells us right now it's 65 degrees in here. We're on idle. We have all of these buttons we need to push. And then our stop action, if we want to view different things, how it's going. When we review our program, once we put it in, we hit the review. And also, what we have, we have policies and procedures. And this is our list of policies and procedures. This is our procedure on how to fire the kiln. So that whoever is there, we go step by step by step by step to make sure that there are no mistakes made. We don't want to fire something at a high fire that's a low fire clay. So we're very particular on what type of clay you're using, what type of glaze you're using to make sure it's all compatible and we'll help you with that. I put all this together, by the way. So, coming over here, this is a very, very, very important piece of ceramic. This is what we put on the kiln. Hot, do not touch, because the outside of the kiln gets quite hot. Um, and it was made a long time ago, and it, we keep it. And sometimes we call, we talk to the kiln god, and and ask him to please, you know, look over our firing and, and make sure. And this piece goes on it every time. So we are very pleased to have somebody who had made this and made it look nice to let everybody know that there is the kiln is firing. These pieces over here have been fired already one time in what we call bisque firing, first firing. They were all lined up over here. Now, they're over here because we're going to go into the glaze firing, the second firing. And these have all been glazed. Let me see which one. I think this one is really beautiful. It will not come out in the same colors you see it. The glaze will come, change colors. And so, it's Christmas when we open our glaze firings. You never know what you're going to get, but we call it Christmas because it's just wonderful to see all the pieces finished and see our creations that came from the kiln to be ready to take home. And at the art show, you'll be able to have a chance to buy them. So make sure you come to the art show too. Now we're going to go over to what we call, this is a very important piece of equipment. This is called a slab roller. And what we do is we take a piece of clay. I'll tear a piece off of this is what called is called B mix. This is a mid-fire clay that is first bisked, fired the first the first firing, and then it will go in at cone five because it's a cone five clay. So I'm just beating it up a little bit flattening it out, then we put it in here, and I will adjust it to get a big piece here. We adjust it for the height, and what you see coming in is not going to be what you see coming out. Let me get this all tuned up here so that it's even on both sides. And this is brand new canvas, so this is its maiden voyage. <laughs> so what you get on this side and a little bit more. There's a flat piece. Oops. There's a flat piece to start with. I can see a little bubbles in here, which we'll take and we'll, we have um, different pieces of equipment here and we can smooth this out and get rid of these little bubbles. Bubbles are not good. We want to make sure that our bubbles are out before we fire them and glaze them. So I can put it back in 
and I'll put it in this way, and I'm going to make it a little thinner. So you can see it going a little thinner, and cover it back up. Roll it this way. I can feel it getting a little bit more round. We can uncover it, and now we have a much larger piece, and it is thinner. Now, from that, we're going to go over here. This is our wedging table, but today we're going to use it for a little bit of display. Show you what we can do with a piece of clay. You can cut this piece of clay off and even it out. If you want to make a rectangle out of it, if you want to make a circle out of it. So all of that is up to you and your design. But today, we're going to do a couple things. We have stamps, and these stamps we can put on, and they'll make impressions in it, and we can work with the impressions that we're going to put into the clay. So you just take this, you put it on the top, I'm going to put it on the top here, and we push down on it, and it comes off, and there is an impression in your clay, and you can make, we have different ones of these, and you can make, this is a heart, and then this you can make into another piece, or you can just cut it out and use the heart. I didn't get it all the way over to the side, as you can see. We do make mistakes. This is a roller. Now with this, you can make something else. You take it, and I'm going to roll it up one side. You press down on it, and you roll it and you get another design. So you can, have, you can use these to make all different kinds of designs in your clay. You can tell a story with it. You can use this and then this has like a little Christmas tree, a little ornament here. You can use this one and this will give you a different design also that you can use as an overall design. Say if you're making a tall vase, this will give you a pattern that you can use then and make into a vase. You just roll it. This is a little thin to show you how to do that. But you roll it and then we put um, newspaper between it to help it dry out and to keep it in a form. And we can show you how to do all of this when you come in. But then all of this, what I've just done, it's glazed, bisque, bisque, glazed, and then put into the kiln. And the kiln makes the magic. It's Christmas. It makes us a finished product. If we didn't have it, all you would see is drying up clay with beautiful patterns in it, but not useful. So to make clay useful, we need the kiln. And... Um, I know we're going to get it. I know hopefully we'll get it soon. So I want to thank you very much. Oh, one more thing. Let's go over to molds. These are molds. This is one of the molds that I just poured last week and haven't cleaned out yet, and that's a bad thing. And I made a vase out of it. And if you go to the orientation, uh, for all of Oceana, you'll see the finished piece that came out of this mold that I'm making, especially for the orientation. Um, you put the top on. We have special rubber bands that go on our molds. You put a rubber band on it. You pour your clay into it. Fill it up. Then you take it and you turn it upside down on a drainer so that you can get the leftover clay out. You leave it sit for 15, 20 minutes, depending on how thick you want it. Then you turn it upside down and you get your clay back. Then you put it back in your, in your bottle of, of slip. And it turns out to be a really nice way to start. I started on some coil work. I don't know why I started on coil work. Um, I've always wanted to be in ceramics. 
I love ceramic because one of the reasons we bought here is because ceramics was here. So it's it's really it's it's really an important place. Um, so many people come here for the Zen and come here for the camaraderie. Um, and making things is is the extra. The extra, the creative part is the extra that you get. You get a sense of community here. Um, we love it here. We have um, Oh, we have lots of molds. This cabinet is full of molds. All of those cabinets over there are full of molds. We have three cabinets over here on your right that are full of molds. So we have so many molds, it would take you quite some time to get through them all. So it would be, it'll be really nice it would be really nice if you could come down. Now I'm going to take you over and I'm going to show you something else. We're going to go over to the wheels. And the wheels were donated this last May. This last May by Lynn, who is one of our members. And what we do is we plug it in, we take a piece of clay, and this is our paddle, and this is what controls. It's, I don't think it's plugged in right now. This is what controls the spinning of the wheel. So I am going to plug this in, and we're going to show you how the wheel goes around. Woo! Okay, it's going fast now. We really don't want it that fast. We have a grip on the other side to put our to put our to put our feet on. We have a grip on the other side to put our feet on so that we're balanced. You have to make sure that you're balanced. You lean over it and you tuck your elbows into this. So it goes around and we have to center it. To begin with, the clay has to be centered. If you go on the um, YouTube, and you look under Tim C, T-I-M-S-E-E, -E. he gives great, wonderful um, lessons on how to throw clay. The wheel is what everybody wants to do, and it's one of the hardest things to do. It's, um, but it's one of the, once you get it, they say you have to throw over 200 pieces on the wheel before you can say that you're perfect at it. We, Lynn is very, very good at it, and she still, after all this time, she still will make a mistake and it will go wobbly on her. It'll, it'll be wonky. But it spins, and you can just see a piece of clay down there, and you put your hands on it like this. And you have to get it around the clay, and then you bring the clay up. You press it down. We call coning up. Then you press it down. And then you start to separate it, depending on what you're making. You have to be in charge of the clay. The clay can't be in charge of you. There are wonderful ideas on YouTube that you can just really get a handle on the wheel before you start. If you want to do the wheel, I recommend YouTube highly to get you started. It will open your eyes as to what you need to do. Then when you come in, you'll know more about what you're doing, how to do it, and why you need to do it. Wedging your clay on the wedge, wedging table over there, we make sure that we do before we put our clay on the wheel because we want to get the bubbles out. We want to get the clay mixed up. Clay has a memory. It's a plastic memory. And it wants to keep going back in there. So we try to mix it up and try to get it to do what we want it to do. So after we do all of this, everything goes in the kiln. And then the kiln brings us Christmas. And we, you are able to see it, you're able to purchase it, you're able to come by any time. We might be working on something, we might be having a class going on, but even if you need individual attention, we're all there for you. So I want to thank you for being in Oceana. I want to thank you for spending time watching this. And I want to thank you for being genies, because Aladdin can't do it by himself. We need genies. So please come.
please visit, donate, and please come to our May 1st Oceano Artist Art Show and Sale. Thank you so much. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.